of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Water and Sewage Chairman Bradley Roberts has responded to an editorial published in the Punch newspaper entitled, Why is Bahama not paying for our poop? Calling the use of the term poop water as inappropriate, Mr. Roberts says it perpetuates the negative perception of reused or treated wastewater, which he says can be treated and reused. Now the suggestion, he says, that water and sewage is taking wastewater from our residential customers and using it to produce a product which will solely benefit BAMAR is wrong, as the agreement with BAMAR mandates that water and sewage receives and treats 450,000 gallons of wastewater from the company and return 300,000 gallons of reused water each day. Well, another group of prison recruits joined the ranks at Her Majesty's Prison after completing four months of intense training. In February, the hand-picked group of some 40 men and women began their initial training process, which ended today with a graduation ceremony at the prison grounds. Prison Superintendent Patrick Wright says it's the mandate of the government to ensure that all prison officers are adequately trained with the skills and tools needed to perform effectively and efficiently and assured the new recruits that they will be treated with dignity and respect but that they must abide by prison guidelines. This administration will improve the working conditions for all officers and more importantly all officers will be treated fairly. Let me advise you now that while we will be fair, we will be firm, as there is no place in the chain of command at Her Majesty's prison for a corrupt officer. With the theme embracing the legacy and forging ahead with excellence, Minister of National Security, the Honorable Dr. Bernard Nottage, encouraged the new prison recruits to put this positive slogan into practice. Now I have the opportunity to put into practice what you have learned as you rotate through the various housing units in the prison over the next eight months while completing your one-year probationary period. I urge you never to forget that prison service is a demanding profession, a job that has its challenges, its frustrations, and an inherent degree of risk. An exhibition on International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drug Trafficking is currently on display at the Mollet Marathon. Under the theme, Make Health Your New High in Life, Not Drugs, Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage made a clarion call to all Bahamians to refrain from drug use as he officially opened the event. The call goes out to all Bahamians and residents of our country not to involve yourself in trafficking, sale or use of illicit drugs. We are determined that we are not going to permit you to destroy our country any further. We are going to hunt you down, we are going to arrest you, and we are going to jail you if you continue to do what you are doing. Well, have you ever considered having a robot operate on you if you ever needed to? Well, it might seem unorthodox, but there are apparently many Bahamians considering the idea. Or NOAA, a patient navigation service that assists Bahamian patients reach medical providers in South Florida, says it gets repeated requests from Bahamians wanting to know if their conditions can be treated with a medical robot. Well, this has led the Florida-based company to bring in three notable techie surgeons to discuss what conditions can be treated and the benefits during a seminar at the Hilton next Thursday. The seminar is by invitation only and geared toward insurance and medical professionals wanting to learn more. Well, the Anglican Church has a new Chancellor, Vice Chancellor and Registrar. Justice Bernard Turner has been appointed as Chancellor and will serve as the Chief Legal Advisor for the Diocese. Attorney Diane Stewart will serve as Vice Chancellor. Tanya Bastian Galanis is the first woman to be appointed as a church's registrar. In her position, she will serve as the keeper of the diocesan seal and the person to preside over the or over the signing of all official documents. The trio will be installed on Sunday evening during the church's patronal festival. Mr. Bernard Turner succeeds Mrs. Ruby Nottage, and he took up office on the 1st of January. Mrs. Diane Stewart will succeed Mr. Samuel Campbell, our outgoing Vice Chancellor, who has done an admirable job in that office. And Mrs. Galanis succeeds Mr. Bernard Turner, who was Registrar before he became Chancellor. And so this 
is something to note, even as we celebrate the fact that we can have such smooth transitions and a continuation of ministry in designating these persons to take over these offices. Now, the Patronal Festival is one of the events listed on the 40th Independence Anniversary calendar. The service will take the form of even song, sermon, procession, and benediction. The Diocesan Patronal Festival is a very important event for us as a church. We celebrate our patron, John the Baptist, his courage and fearlessness uh, in New Testament times, and we pray that that same fearlessness and uh, ardor for the gospel would permeate our own lives. The word bel canto means beautiful singing in Italian, and that's exactly what the illustrious group of musicians do. The bel canto singers are making final preparations for their upcoming concert, Music for All Times, which is to be held this Saturday at Christ Church Cathedral. The event is an official cultural offering in celebration of the country's 40th independence anniversary. We are proud to have um, Bahamians who are composers within the group. Um, Synovia Pierre, who's standing just behind us, will be debuting one of her pieces, My Spirit Shall Not Pass Away. Um, and Kate Quincy Parker, who's also a member of the group, all of the string arrangements for many of the very um, popular songs, um, both classical and contemporary Christian, um, have been arranged by him. Saturday, people can expect music that comes from the heart, music that comes from the soul, music that, that will, you know, um, enlighten the spirit and I think people will definitely be walking away satisfied. Coming up in Family Island News, how crabs lead to dough for taxi drivers. And swimmers dive into competition at the national championships. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's. I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm LaDawn Davis. Executives of the Nassau Airport. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm LaDawn Davis. Executives of the Nassau Airport Development Company revealing that the $409.5 million final phase at the Linden Penling International Airport is expected to be completed ahead of schedule and within its budget. NAD CEO Vernice Walking making the announcement during a CIBC First Caribbean International Bank's two-day infrastructure conference on Thursday. Construction on the new domestic and international departures and domestic arrivals terminal began in October last year. Meantime, LPIA currently facilitates 32 airlines that service some 29 international and 16 domestic destinations. The final phase is expected to be completed before November 20th. The Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce is partnering with the Port Authority to host its first ever business workshop next week Tuesday in the nation's second city. It's the Chamber's mandate to prepare small and medium-sized enterprises with the tools needed to take full advantage of a number of opportunities expected to come on stream in a few months. And in international business news, today marks the first day for some good old summer fun, but hurricane season is also upon us, which means you still have some work to do on your homeowner's insurance. Several top U.S. insurance agencies are strongly encouraging millions of American homeowners to re-examine their insurance policies. Last year, Hurricane Sandy caused tens of billions of dollars in damages. And that's a look at your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm LaDawn Davis. <music>